on to the next thing, DC response. So Kyle, you're gonna be up next with a question. Remember, what does, in DC response, uh, Kyle, what does a inductor become? Or look like, I should say? Inductor would look like, not a... Um... If you're not sure, don't try, to, don't try to memorize it. Think about it. An inductor is like a water, inertia in a pipe. Mm -hmm. If in the DC circuit, nothing is changing. So does the inertia matter if nothing's changing? No. No. So what circuit element doesn't change anything? Is it an open or is it a short? It would be in short. Short. That's it. And that's the reasoning to use too. And you don't have to worry about memorizing. Okay. So here's my example. All right. There's a couple of things we want to find. We want to find this current and we want to find this voltage. Your first step is to recognize that the only sources in here, this guy is not changing, it's DC. And since it's not changing, by the way, I don't know why we call it DC. DC is short for direct current and it's an old holdover from a long time ago. It's just historically interesting. But when we say things aren't changing, we call them DC. So this is a DC circuit. What are we going to change all these capacitors and resistors to? What are you going to change this inductor to? A short. A short. So you got two volts here. That hasn't changed. This is a short. And Linda, what are you going to change the capacitor to? An open. All right. So we got this open. And this is still, this 80 millihenries is now a short. And we've got four ohms over here. And we still need really important when you solve these things to always draw your, the variables that you want to find. Since we're at the end of the class, I'm going to fill this in. I, just from Ohm's law, you've got this two volts over the four ohms. So it's got to be one half amp. And meanwhile, the V is being measured right over a wire. Well, the voltage over a wire is always going to be zero volts. And that still works out, by the way, with adding up all the intermediate voltages, right? Because this will be two volts over here and this will be zero volts. And if we add them all up, we'll get minus two plus zero plus two equals zero. So that makes sense. So these are the answers for this particular section. I'm gonna ask you to find the energy stored in the 80 millihenry inductor. So Jacob, what's the formula for energy in an inductor? One half uh, L times current squared. That's it. So if you know what the current is, you can figure it out. Our L is 80 millis. And the current through it, we already figured out it's equal to one half. So that'd be squared. So now we've got a half times a half squared, which would be an eighth all told, times 80 millis. So that would be 10 millis and the units would be joules. So that's how much energy is stored in the magnetic field, 10 millijoules. I'd like to give you a sense of what that means. If you Put, if you put paddles, defibrillating paddles on someone who's having a heart attack, you're going to push in 60 to 100 joules. So about 10 millijoules is on the other side, just about what you can barely feel. So this would be enough to get a, to just barely feel it if you were, if you were constructing it. 